Hi, this is Stacy with Gooseberry Bridge Farm, and I'm going to work on a video talking about you pick flowers and um, kind of what's happening and what to expect in our flower field um, in whatever month this is, uh, June 1st tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, so you'll see our um, successions of zinnias, the successions of cosmos, and of celosia. That's probably all I'm gonna do as far as succession planting. I've got a little bit of fever a few there. It didn't do that well. Oh, and sunflowers. These were just seeded, so they're not coming up yet. But those are single stem sunflowers. And I will go show you all the successions of sunflowers in the field. Because if you want to keep having single stem sunflowers all season, you have to keep planting them pretty much every week in order to have them every week. I've been planting, we've been doing these about every 10 days. The goal is a week, it just doesn't always happen. All right, so we're getting these watered. This is the fun part about growing seedlings in trays outdoors in the summer. Uh, we have to water them a ton. So uh, about three times a day I'm out here throwing water on these. They really probably need some fertilizer too, but I'm just gonna try to get them in the ground tiny. Okay, we're going out um, to the biggest successions of single stem sunflowers first. So I will show you that and some of our spring planted flowers that are just starting to bloom. They will make up the bulk of what we have when we first open. So I, I have to plant them, even though by the time we get really busy in July, they're usually done, it's still, worth it. I try to go heavy on stuff like status and straw flowers that dry well for me and I try to get in an early succession of cosmos and zinnias so that they are blooming by mid-June with the sunflowers. To get that early succession I'm starting the first sunflowers and zinnias and cosmos probably around the 20th of April which is right around our last frost date but since they don't want to be outside at that point, I start them in the greenhouse. And uh, if you start them too much earlier than that, and then we have a cold early May, we just can't put them out. Or if you do put them out when it's cold and wet, they have fungal issues and it slows them down. I found that keeping them happy and small and then putting them out when the weather is right, probably about the third week in May, works best here in our climate. So these are the sunflowers. Um, I could have got them out a little bit earlier. I could have probably um, started them uh, in time to have sunflowers be around the 10th of June. With sunflowers, you can look at the, the variety and see how many days to harvest, and that's when roughly it will bloom. Um, the thing I have noticed is that that's a range. It'll say like 40 to 50 days or something like that. And when it, the weather is right and the daylight hours are the longest, that time is on the shorter end and when it's a little cooler at night and the days are shorter they go to the longer end so i've had some years where i didn't time this quite right and the second succession ended up taller than the first one faster that hasn't happened this year i'm pretty sure this is all one succession and then this is one and i think that it's happening this way because it's been overall a bit cooler but there's some really tall ones in here this is persian cress it's about ready to be harvested to dry like some of this is really really ready i need to get it out of here while it's still green um i cut all this and hang it up and dry it some of it fell over that was unfortunate i should have put the netting down um that's very fun teddy's making dandelion curls back over here we have some stuff I need to clean up because when you have you pick, you can't leave stuff like that around. Oh my goodness. Okay, this is kind of funny. This is where I had my celosia last year, and that is celosia in there, and in this hole, and right there. That's a lot of celosia coming out of one hole. As you will notice, those are almost as big as the other successions I put in the trays. So if I could get that to spread out and be in all the holes, that would be really cool and I could just not plant celosia. But that's not the case. So the rest of the plants in here, there's a lot of dead spots because um, these guys were not very happy with me when I planted them. But these are Rebecca. They're way too small. They were planted way too late. They were started on time. 
they were planted out too late. Um, same kind of situation with my Dusty Miller, but I'm hoping it will recover and I will be able to dry that. So this is all status down both sides. I've got some really fun new colors. Uh, I really enjoy growing it. Um, I'm trying to find one that's open, but I've been picking them all, so I don't really have it ready. There's one. That's one of my new colors. And in here is the, the straw flowers. And I had this all full of straw flowers, and then we had some crazy freezes and flooding and all sorts of stuff. And so there's a lot of holes. So I planted Cosmos in the holes. So at least we'll have the space filled up and not a bunch of dead stuff growing weeds. Um, and then these are winged everlasting, which I couldn't tell when they were small, but that's what they were. Um, and they, um, I thought they died. And that is not good. I think those, what? I'm not sure what kind of eggs they are, but they what? look so much like squash bug eggs that I don't like them. I don't know if they're stink bug eggs. You're gonna hold on to them? Don't let them, don't lose them, buddy. We are gonna use our um, internet later to identify those and make sure they're bad bugs, but I'm pretty sure they are. Or at least bugs that would eat our plants. Anyway, so this is our early stuff, and it's also stuff that I like to dry, which is part of why it's all the way back here in the back of the field. So if I decide that I am done and I have enough out here for people to you pick, I can pull that section by roping this off and keep it for myself for other uses. So this is the other spring planted area that will be really blooming here in a few weeks. And some of it is already really blooming, unfortunately, like this Papinaria. This is all a perennial Rebecca. They're starting to bloom. This is a perennial verbena. This stuff all came up on its own and planted itself, and I am I am super excited about that. This is a blue Victoria blue salvia. Wait, is, not um okay, I'll take the bugs back, Teddy. Or the eggs. Okay, anyway, this is yellow. It's supposed to be double yellow coreopsis. I need to find out why it's not double. Um Teddy. Why are you picking my flowers? Anyway, this is needs to be weeded. We just replaced these snapdragons with the succession. This is the ones we planted originally. They're, they're making some flowers, which I'm actually going to press because those aren't really long enough stems. Um, these are all branching beautifully. I need to pull this grass. And then all these red ones are a different variety. They'll make a dark red flower. But they are, they, I just transplanted them. I saved them because this row was almost full and I saw it was raining a lot and a lot of my strap dragons. I don't know if you guys can't probably tell, but there's a hill right here, it goes down, and that spot gets really soggy, and snap dragons can be really prone to root rot. So this is Feverfew, this is Calendula, Chamomile, and Bee's Friend. And I've got all sorts of other spring mix stuff here. I've got stuff that didn't quite um, like the transition from soil blocks to soil. I've got these giant bread seed poppies that I'm growing for their dried pods. Um, this row in Scabiosa, but most of this row, like all the poppies and some of the stuff down there will come out in time to put in some of those successions of zinnias I was talking about earlier. So I'll replace that. I'll also be replacing all of this. I'm hoping this will bloom long enough yeah. for the people cutting flowers because it kind of bloomed early this year but this stuff is so pretty it's usually only around for the first couple weeks of you pick um, that bird is really loud um, even if we don't use this for you pick it's so easy to grow and it's super worth having it for the bees right now there's just wood bees on it but during the middle of the day we have honeybees all over it also um, the chamomile at this time last year was all completely in bloom and this year we just have a few blooming. So I'm really hoping it catches up and actually blooms later 
and that would be better later than normal. That would be better for you pick because it was blooming for the first few weeks of you pick last year, but I know it was also blooming the first of June, which is tomorrow, and this is not this is not that much. Um, and this is all calendula, which I've been picking and picking and picking for ourselves. I need to get the rest of it off of there, and I'm going to keep cutting it back so that it's growing longer stems. I'm cutting anyway. The more I cut it, the longer the stems are getting, and the more flowers on the stems for some of the varieties. And then it will be a nice early focal flower for you pick. Okay, this row is getting Celosia. This row is getting more Cosmos. I need to figure out what to do with this row over here because it's six inch facing up to there and then it's 12 inch. I can either make it all six or I can plant something there that likes more space. Um, anyway, I've got these tubs out here that I just plant decorative pollinator stuff in. This is all pollinator garden and in being a pollinator garden, it is also a photo backdrop. Um, I just have to keep people from picking the stuff that is in there, which can be a challenge, but it works. You can see all this pretty, the celosia is so pretty even as babies. And some of it is trying to make tiny little flowers. Um, I will come in and pinch a lot of those off and just keep cutting it back. And I'm gonna be pressing them. So this is a volunteer branching sunflower. Those always get the biggest. And then here is a whole row of branching sunflowers. We have a little bit of room left to, for a succession planting. Um, but this makes just a beautiful photo backdrop for July and August because they just keep on blooming. And we cut them for a while, but last year they got like 15 feet tall and we couldn't even reach the top. And then I've got three rows here that don't have any holes in them yet because I don't know for sure what I'm going to be planting. But my general plan is more successions of cosmos, maybe zinnias, and all the single stem sunflowers. Because I want to have I want to have enough single stem sunflowers that we don't have to limit how many people pick. But we'll see. They're kind of a, you know like one seed, one flower situation. So it's um, it's hard to make sense of it financially when you let people pick like an entire container of them and they take $50 in flowers for $25 and it's just it doesn't balance out the way it does when you limit the sunflowers and mostly pick the other stuff. Anyway, these are the first succession of zinnias that we put in. They look phenomenal. Um, they're very bushy, which is what you want. And these didn't even get pinched yet. I'm actually going to just pinch the little bud off the top of this one so that it keeps focusing on making these branches sooner because I want these when we open in a few weeks instead of each having one flower on the top I want them to each be making like three flowers which is asking a lot. That one over there looks like a an overachiever. So we have two rows of these and then that row over there is marigolds that also look awesome and probably need to be pinched. And then these two rows of zinnias were planted a little later and they have a lot of, um, they're struggling a bit. Same reason that everything else is. Uh, like this whole section looks pretty dead. There's been a bird hanging out here. You see all the bird evidence. Um, a robin actually. And then the robin comes down to get worms and keeps breaking my plants. I've watched them do it. They Sometimes they pull them straight out of the ground. Um, they're trying to get the worms in there and the bugs and I like that they're eating the bugs but this is looking rough but I have more plants there's another spot down there right under the hoop that is really dead so anyway I'm gonna let these take off and see how they're doing um, there's more over there the only reason I haven't already tried to replace all of these is because I planted a them in rainbow order so these were a certain color then those were a certain color and then those and I don't really want to mess it up but I'm probably gonna have to because I can't leave like 10 holes empty right in the middle of the row so we'll see okay and over here 
these are um, this is a perennial row primarily and I'm trying to get more perennials in it these are things that reseeded here some larkspur and calendula these are echinacea lupine that's already done for the year and making cute little seed pods um, and some other perennials yarrow and I've got a new type of yarrow in here now these little guys hoping they take off and we've got some colorful yarrow down here and this will keep blooming until a few weeks into you pick there's the pink and the colors which are probably all over here will really make it into you pick season where the whites are usually about done by the, the end of June but I dry a ton of this I love it for dried bouquet filler so if you're going to have a you pick flower farm um, it's really important to balance what works for you pick with what works for potential retail or wholesale or um, secondary products like dried, what would that be, uh, value add, dried or pressed flowers, um, dried and pressed edible flowers. Like there's so many things you can do with the same space, but you kind of have to plan for it. Okay, so I'm in the bachelor button row now, and then we have some agrostema just popping up. It's so pretty. I'm going to be pressing some of these. I want to do a lot more pressed flower um, art. Hopefully I'll get that done before winter, but if I don't, winter it is. Um, I'll do a video about how I do all of that, how I press the flowers. There's a wild onion. Um, and anyway, how I press, why is this won't focus? Okay. How I press the flowers and how I make stuff out of them. And also how I've already done some videos on the dried flowers um, and the wreaths but I need to do some other stuff. This is Orlea, it was all volunteer, and I'm letting it all go to seed. Um, there's the seeds, and then this is Nigella, and the Nigella pods are so pretty right now. They're so dark. I'm not sure if I saved primarily white ones last year, but they were not that dark. Why won't this stay focused? Someone please tell me. Um, I've got a lot of grass here that I need to get out, and the Saponaria here that's almost done already. I probably won't be planting Saponaria again. Let's get some of this. This is all Johnson grass. This stuff is evil. Um, just because it blooms so early and I just don't need it. I, If I was trying to get an earlier you pick season or get in on a Mother's Day um, situation like selling flowers or having a Mother's Day you pick which would be fabulous but it's just gonna, it would be so hard to time it here. If you lived in maybe zone seven and could overwinter a lot more of this stuff, I can overwinter bachelor buttons and have them blooming around Mother's Day. And I can maybe get poppies, or not, yeah, poppies and peonies and maybe Orlea um, and lupine. I mean, there's things I can get to bloom that early. And if I put a tunnel, a plastic tunnel or a frost cloth tunnel over the yarrow, it will bloom a little bit earlier, but all of that is not worth it to me. But I've pretty well determined that I'm going to grow things that um, I can either dry and use, preserve early on when they bloom early, or um, make sure that they are going to bloom through June. If they bloom early and then make it through the 4th of July, perfect because that's when I have a shortage of zinnias and sunflowers and cosmos and summer stuff. I'll have the beginnings of it at the beginning of July, but I don't have enough to fill containers. So we need to fill containers, like a bunch of them, um, in order to open. So that makes sense. And I am gonna walk over to our little um, headquarters of the flower field and show you guys our UPIC container and explain how that works. Okay, someone remind me to mow the grass before I film a tour of the UPIC. But um, that is another thing to mention about UPIC. I really like having grass aisles that are really big. The plants grow up, they don't block the aisle. Those run, the one row I have are four or five rows of spring stuff that have fabric aisles um, that are only about two and a half feet wide. They do get hard 
to walk through by the end of the season where these stay open. So the downside is having to mow all of this. And because our riding mower barely fits and doesn't have a bagging attachment, I have to push mow all of this. All, all of this. Okay, I'm up on the porch of our little area. It's a huge mess because we're not open right now. Um, this is full of spoons from where we sell locally made ice cream uh, when we're open. But this is our container. It's from the dollar store, dollar something. Um, we order it by the case and put our little sticker on the side. It holds 50 to 80 stems and it's a good tall container. They're plastic so we don't have to worry about them breaking in the field. And uh, I don't know, it's worked well for us since we opened in 2020. You can just visualize what this would look like when it was clean and we were open and I had my hanging baskets hung up and my sign up by the road. Um, but we have our farm made products over here, which is mostly empty because we are open all spring. We sold a lot of that stuff. And then we have our herb salts, which should be on a different table. We sell ice cream from a local company. We sell Fitz's root beer from a, a Missouri made root beer farm made harvest baskets um sometimes we have other stuff people seem to like that we have a little area to shop and this is our uh, little decorative flower bed area i also have this new area this year that i would really like to do something else with and i haven't quite figured out how to do it but we've got a little mud kitchen here which i will put a link for in the description because it's awesome love it it uh it is a little dirty because it's unfinished wood it came with dishes which seem to have walked off with my children i'm planning to make some like more outdoor play food like little fruit rocks and whatnot and you can write on the chalkboard on the top and you can put water in the in the sink and or not anyway it's nice to have something for the younger kids to do we all have animals in here and so I say like mom and dad and kids come to pick flowers and mom's really into flower picking but the kids aren't. Instead of having to leave, they can come play over here and watch the animals. Um, that is when we don't have, when we have baby bunnies, they had a daisy, she's our rat terrier, but when we have baby bunnies um, and other small animals in the summer, they go in this pen. Daisy is really unhappy because there's a cat by my feet. Anyway, they go in here and then we, as an add-on to your flower picking, your mom's picking flowers and <laughs> dad and children want to play with the animals, they can pay by the person to come in and hang out in our little animal area, minus the dog. But we will have, we could have bunnies and Probably bunnies and goats and whatever else we happen to have at the time. Sometimes we'll put little chicks out here or something. But it's also just fun to hang out in this little corner. It's uh, kind of contained on a few sides by fences. And when we're when they're not already put to bed like they are now, the goats come up to this fence and visit with you. Right now the goats and the turkey are all down here at the barn just hanging out because that's the area where they are kept at night to keep them safe. Another mess on the farm. These are all limbs that we trimmed off our driveway because we have to keep our driveway clear for the public to come down it. And the goats got to tear all the leaves off of them and now we have a bunch of sticks we have to pick up. So I hope you learned some more about UPIC and things to think about if this is what you're planning to do with your flower farm. If you are not, um, if you don't already have a flower farm, I should probably make a whole video about that.